guys, welcome to Gen Z Coders. This is the third tutorial for Python. Last time I discussed variables and data types. This time we'll be creating a program through which we will learn the input and print functions. Okay, so let's begin. Right, so first I wanted to tell you about the print and input functions. The print function basically prints whatever you tell it to on the screen. So to do this, simply type print in all lowercase, and then we put the um, parenthesis. Inside this, we put an inverted comma and we say, well, whatever we want to be printed out. So let's say, I want to say, hello, coders. Then I close the parenthesis. Remember, it's always important to uh, oh, close every function that you open, um, close every syntax, because syntaxing is very important in um, Python and even other programming languages. All right, so let's just click enter. And look, it, it prints out Hello Coders. So this is how you can talk to the audience through your program. So you can display instructions or like any other thing that you want to communicate to your audience. Okay. So the second code I want to discuss is input. Now in order for a program to be interactive, it needs to take some input from the audience, right? So let's say I want to ask, what's your name? Then for the person to answer, I would need to add the input function. I think the name pretty much speaks for itself, right? So the input function is used to get an input from the audience. So to find out a person's name, I would make I would first make a variable that's called my name. And then if you remember initializing it, I would say equal to, and then here I would say um, input and then um, parentheses. Now over here we leave this blank because um, there's no really content. We're waiting for the input because we don't have the input yet. Over here, I'm already given the input, but over here, I don't have the input yet, okay? So I'm gonna click enter, and then I'm gonna, so you may notice that over here and everywhere else, it usually evaluates down to a single value, and Python itself would give you a value. Here, because I've said input, it's asking for my input now. So I have to type in something. So I'd say Gen Z coders is the name. Okay, now let's call the variable. So let's call the variable my name. So I'm gonna say my name and just click enter. And there we go, it says Gen Z coders. Now that has been stored in that my name variable. Okay, so um, now let's get started on our first program. So I'm gonna click file and new file. All right, so basically for a while we've been using this um, window, which is what we call an interactive shell. Now though, since we're actually going to be creating an actual program, um, we're going to be using a blank window, blank template, and this is basically um, where you're going to type in all of your code. So as you may have noticed over here, as soon as you click enter, you get an immediate value that's, or a single value that's ev evaluated directly, right? Here that doesn't happen. Here you can write down lines and lines of code and until you click run, that entire program is not going to run. So that's why we use this one. Okay, so this program is going to say hello and then ask for your name and we're just going to add a few variations later on. So um, the very first thing that I actually want to do is I want to make a note of what I just said. So then I want to make a note of the purpose of this game, of this program. So I'm going to put hashtag Say this program okay so this program will say hello and then it will ask for your name now basically what this is where I've put the hashtag it's a comment right so um, if I let's say I have a thought one day but I don't have more time to work on the program, right? So I'm going to start working on it the next day, right? So to make sure that I don't forget that one thought or to make sure that I understand what I'm doing, I could just make a small comment. Now, this is obviously completely optional. You don't need this. But a lot of times it's kind of recommended so that you kind of don't get lost on what you're doing in your code. Okay, so, um, okay, now let's go ahead and let's start actually coding. So the first line is going to be print, hello, coder. So this is pretty much the same. The next, oh, wait, wait oops. The next one is going to be print, what is your name? Right, and then after this, 
since it's asking what is your name, obviously I want an input, right? I want the person to answer me. So I'm going to say my name. So I'm going to create the same variable. I'm going to say my name is equal to input with the two parentheses. All right. I hope it's clear to now. Now the next thing, what I the next thing I want the program to do is I kind of want it to say it is nice to meet you, and then I want it to say the name of the person. So if the name is like Allison or Lisa, I want it to say it is nice to meet you, Allison or Lisa. So to do this, I'm gonna say print. I'm gonna say it is nice to meet you. Space, and then I'm gonna close that. Okay. Now I don't know if you seen the previous videos but in um, one of them I talked about string connotation. String connotation is when you take two string values you put a plus sign in between and then um, basically this it would be evaluated to a single value right and that single value would have two different strings together so combined to give you one single string. This is where it's useful so here I'm gonna put Plus, and I'm going to say my name. Now, over here, my name stores a string value, right? Because this is a variable and it'll always store a string value. So by saying it is nice to meet you, at, so that's my first string value. That is my second string value, which is stored in the form of a variable at the moment. So when I say this plus this, it essentially does string connotation and uh, concatenates these two strings, right? And it'll give you it is nice to meet you plus my name. However, if I say if I put let's say if I put my name over here, then it's literally going to print it's nice to meet you plus my name, right? That's not what we want. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do is we want the program to determine how many letters the person has in that in their name. So let's first just say you have, okay, and then it'll be plus letters in your name, okay? Now, over here, there's a function which is called len, okay? It's like that, right? So, there's a function called len. Now, what len does is it basically finds out the number of letters in a string, or the number of characters in a string, right? So, when I say len my name, it will automatically give you the length of the name, right? So the number of letters. However, um, I don't know if I've told you this already, but in a, when you use a print function, you cannot put an integer. So if these are all strings, but this, because I'm saying length of my name, it would evaluate down to an integer. Now, um, you can explicitly change this, so you can convert this integer to a string. And I'll show you how to do that. So first, you put brackets around these. And then over here, I say stir, right? And then this becomes the entire function, right? Print, you have dash letters in your name. And I'll show you how this runs once I actually run the program, OK? So that's basically how you convert an integer or uh, an integer value to a string. And if, let's say, this was a um, integer, let's say this was a string value and I wanted to convert it to an integer value, instead I would just put int over here instead of str. Okay? Right. Now the last thing I want the program to do is I wanted to ask the person's age as well. So, obviously I'd say, what is your age? Okay? Then I put again, again I put the input function. Okay, now the next thing I wanted to do is I want the program to say you will be dash years in one year. So let's say you're 14 now, and that's what I've put over here, right? If that's what I've put, then the next um, thing should be you will be 15 in one year. Okay, so let me show you how to do that. So first of all, obviously, we're going to say you will be, and then we close that, and then let's say in a year. Okay. Now, over here we can just put my age plus one, right? We can do that. Actually, we can't. Now, I want you to take 
a moment and pause the video actually and try to figure out yourself why you can't do this. Okay, so the reason that you cannot do this is because one is an integer, but my age is a string. Now I know what you're probably thinking that, but when you say my age, you're technically asking for a numeric value, right? Well, not exactly. Although I, the programmer, am asking you for an integer value, the program itself, there's no specification of an integer value. Over here, I have simply said um, input, so the program considers this as a string. So instead of saying 14, it would be 14. That's how it's going to be stored, and that is a string value, not an integer value. And remember how I said previously that you cannot um, add an integer or a numeric value to a string for obvious reasons, right? Because it wouldn't make any sense. So you technically cannot add my age plus one. You would get an error. So for this, I would have to convert my age to an integer first. And how do I do this? I put the brackets and then I put int. Okay, seems fair enough. But now we have another problem. We cannot have an integer value in the print function. So we put the parenthesis again, and over here we say stir. So essentially what happens first is that it that my age variable is converted to, a, for, to an integer. Then one is added to that integer. After that, the entire thing, so let's say if that is now 15, that will be con uh, that will be con um, that will be converted to a string value, right? And then that's how it will be. You will be dash years in one year. Okay. Now let's try running it. So you got to save it first. I'm just gonna save that to my desktop, and I'm gonna say project one. Hello coders. Okay. So it says, hello coders, what is your name? So that seems fine, good enough for now. Okay, so it says, it is nice to meet you, Gen Z coders. You have 10 letters in your name, so that works well. So 10, you can count that to see, make sure. Um, then it asks me, what is your age? So I'd say maybe 14. And it says, you will be 15 in a year. And that's correct, that's exactly right. So that is it for this video. Um, the program works well. Now, I know this was a pretty short program, pretty extremely quite simple, actually. But um, you kind of learn the basics before we get into the real, you know, fun stuff and auto GUI. So anyways, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're going to be doing a lot more fun and cool things with Python later on. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now and thank you for watching.